Has Austin Matthews ever been to Toronto? Did he like it? It's been a rough few days for the Leafs. They were briefly within arm's length of a playoff spot, followed by a 7-0 loss to the Sharks, and now their leading scorer, James Van Riemsdyk, is out for six to eight weeks. It ain't over till it's over, but I've been reading a lot of fans just going, tank, tank, tank. And they might not be wrong. After all, that was probably the plan all along. Not to tank, not to lose on purpose, but at the trade deadline, so, and that's something a lot of people have been talking about. Something I've talked about, wrote about, I'll even link to those below. I've been talking about who I think the Leafs are going to trade, what they could get in return, when it's going to happen. It's all just little theories in my brain at this point. But wait a second, stop. Let's think about this a little harder for a sec. It's easy to say, oh, the Leafs are going to trade P.A. Parento for like a, a second round pick, or they're going to trade Brad Boys, or Michael Grabner, or Roman Polak. We could just list off all the names of guys who are going to be traded for draft picks. And then you look at the draft picks that the Leafs Leafs have. As of right now, the Leafs have all of their own 2016 NHL draft picks. Plus, they got an extra sixth rounder from St. Louis for Ole Okunen, remember that. Plus, they got an extra fifth rounder from Anaheim for Kerbini and Holzer, remember that. Plus, they got a third rounder from New Jersey as part of the Phil Kessel trade, remember that. And if Pittsburgh makes the playoffs, they get a first round pick from the Penguins. If Pittsburgh makes the playoffs, and right now it's looking pretty close, that's 11 picks for the Leafs. If the Leafs trade all the guys I just mentioned and maybe more, how many draft picks do you actually think they're going to have? 12, 13, 14, 15, 20? That's just not going to happen, is it? I asked Steve Fellin, one of the lovely folks in Sportsnet stats department, who, since the draft has gone down to seven rounds, has picked the most players in one single draft. And the answer is a three-way tie between the 2010 Florida Panthers, the 2008 New York Islanders, and the 2006 New York Islanders. How many picks did those teams have? 13. It's not even the trade deadline yet, and you're going to tell me that the Leafs are two picks away from tying that record and three away from breaking it? No, I just don't think that's going to happen. I mean, they might get a couple picks, but I think they're probably going to trade guys for a prospect like Brennan Leipzig, who was in the Cody Franzen trade last year. Plus, if you strike gold in the prospects department, that could potentially speed up the rebuild a little bit. But okay, let's pause for a sec. What did those Panthers and Islanders, and I'll even mention the Blackhawks, what did those teams do with all of those picks? In 2010, the Florida Panthers picked 13 players and six of them are in the NHL right now. Five of them on the Panthers. Erica Branson, Nick Bugstad, and Quinton Howden were the Panthers' three first-round picks that draft. Yes, they had three first-round picks. The Panthers also had three second-rounders, so they had six picks in the first two rounds. John McFarland, Alex Petrovic, and Connor Brickley. And of those three guys, both Petrovic and Brickley have played on the Panthers this season. The one that got away in the fourth round, they picked Eunice Donskoy, who they lost for nothing to the San Jose Sharks. Beyond that, those are five Five guys who have contributed to the Panthers being first in their division right now. And yeah, there's other guys too, of course, but that's just one draft and Rome wasn't built in a day. Now, the Islanders' little journey that started about 10 years ago was weird. In 2005, the Islanders picked seven guys, three of them ever played a game in the NHL for a total of 56 games played. Not a very good draft. So in 2006, they said, give us all the picks. Four fourth rounders, two fifth rounders, three sixth rounders. But the best player they got by far was their first rounder, seventh overall, Kyle Ocpozo. They did get one one player with one of those sixth rounders, uh, you may know him as Andrew McDonald. Whoosh! Well, that's the Flyers' problem now. 2008, they go, okay, okay, we're gonna go back to picking all of the picks again, and this time we're gonna do it right. Nine of those 13 players ended up playing in the NHL. Four of them have played over 300 NHL games so far. They got Josh Bailey with their first rounder, and with one of their three second rounders, they managed to land Travis Hamannick. And some depth guys who have helped them in the past too, Matt Donovan, David Yulstrom, Matt Martin, that's a draft where quantity helped reshape the Islanders. And then there's the argument of quality because we have the 2009 draft where every single player the Islanders picked ended up playing at least one NHL game including Anders Lee, Casey Sezikis, Calvin DeHaan, and John Tavares. So if we look at the Islanders in those years as a case study, it's a bit of a crapshoot. Of course you have your scouts and you have your research and you have heavy debate, but at the end of the day, every draft pick is a dart and you're just kind of going like that. And I brought up the Chicago Blackhawks because in 2005 they were one pick away from the record with 12 picks. Oh, okay, let me let me think about back then. Okay, they, did they get like Patrick Kane or Jonathan Taves, maybe Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook, Corey Crawford, key parts of their team. Jack Skilly was their first rounder and he barely played for them. Mike Blunden was their second rounder and he barely played for them. Their fourth rounder, Nicholas Holmerson. That's really all they got. So I bring up those examples and I relate them to the Leafs by saying just because you have a ton of picks 
doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get anything with them. Oh, it gives you a better shot? Sure it gives you a better shot. If you buy more lottery tickets, you're more likely to win the Powerball. And then you can buy the Leafs and run them however you want. But ultimately, it requires a lot of research, a lot of development, and a lot of luck. Now what the Leafs can do if they go the route where they get tons of picks is they could trade up. We would like another second round pick and because of the trade deadline you may have two thirds in exchange. We want another guy in the fourth round, here's two fifths. If, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe. So what do you think the Leafs are going to do? What do you think they should do and what do you think is the best route? And no, smuggling Steven Stamkos back into Canada is not an acceptable answer. That's probably illegal. Probably.